Hey all, this is Alan with Bothell STEM Coach, and today we're going to be doing some more AP Physics 1 problems, um, specifically some rotational problems. Um, I'm moving on to some more angular momentum questions for these, so um, these will be angular momentum specific, so let's get into it. As usual, I, I suggest you pause it, attempt to do the problem, and then uh, come back to the video after you've um, tried the problem. So we have a system consisting of a ball of mass a, a ball of mass M2 and a uniform rod of mass M1 length D. The rod is attached to a horizontal frictionless table by a pivot P and initially rotates at an angular speed omega, as shown above. The rotational inertia of the rod about the point P is one-third M1 D squared. The rod strikes the ball, which is initially at rest. As a result of the collision, the rod is stopped and the ball moves in the direction as shown to the to the right. Express all answers in terms of m1, m2, omega, d, and fundamental constants. Derive an expression for the angular momentum of the rod of about point P before the collision. Okay, so this thing is initially rotating, and angular momentum is always equal to i omega. Okay, they tell us what the i of this rotating object is, the rotational inertia. It's one-third m1 d squared, and they give you omega, so that's it. So it's just i times omega. This one's pretty straightforward. Because they wanted it in terms of m1, m2, omega, and d. Okay. B. Derive an expression for the speed of the ball v after the collision. Okay, so what, what's going to happen is um, we have to have angular momentum is conserved in a collision. Okay, not linear. I mean, linear momentum is technically conserved too, but in this one, the math is easier with angular momentum because I have angular momentum before and afterwards, after the collision, this thing is the only thing moving. So we have to compute the angular momentum of this scenario. We'll call this like L1 and L2. So L2, that's the angular momentum after this. Well, this thing is not rotating anymore. So this thing has an omega of zero. So his angular momentum is zero. This thing about this point P has an angular momentum. And that's a, that's a tricky part for some people to understand is that relative to a point, um, you can still have angular momentum even if this thing isn't really rotating. Relative to that point, we consider that like the angle is changing. So as this ball moves, his angle's here, then it's here, then it's here. It's still considered a kind of rotation, okay? So what would the angular momentum be? Again, it would be i times omega. Well, what is the rotational inertia when I have this point? Um, rotational inertia would be m2 times d squared because that it's the mass times the distance squared um, if it's a fixed mass at a distance away. That's what i is equal to. Um, omega would be um, the angle, this, this sort of angular speed here. And in this case, I don't have, I don't, I don't know it's omega, and I'm not even trying to solve for its omega. I'm trying to solve for its linear velocity, and the relationship between linear velocity and omega is v is equal to r omega. So that means omega is equal to v over r, right? So when I multiply by omega, I multiply by v over r. Now r is the distance this point, this object is away from the point of rotation. So that's a D. So these D's cancel and I get M2 D V. So this is the angular momentum of this ball um, from relative to this point of rotation. And now we're gonna set them equal to each other. One third M1 D squared omega is equal to M2 D V. And I can solve for V. One of these d's will cancel, and I divide by m2, so I get v is equal to one third m1 over m2 d times omega. Okay. C. Assuming that the collision is elastic, what does elastic mean? It means mechanical energy is conserved. So I'm thinking I got to do some kind of served. Calculate the numerical value of the ratio m1 over m2. Okay, so the second piece of information that they're telling you is that um, during this, the energy is conserved. Okay, so let's kind of set up what's the energy before 
it's one half i omega squared for this thing rotating and that's one half i which is one third m1 d squared times omega squared and that's one half times one third is one sixth m1 d squared omega squared okay the energy after um you can think of it as rotational energy but it's really just kinetic energy of this afterwards because this thing that's another way to think of it is the energy after is just this thing because this thing stopped moving so there's no rotational energy here but the, what's remaining is this energy is one half m2 v1 squared or uh, I don't say I don't know why I say v1 squared um, v squared Okay, so I have a relationship that says these two are equal. 1 sixth m1 d squared omega squared is equal to 1 half m2 v squared. Now, um, what I want to replace, so if, if you think about it, um, I'm trying to find a numerical value for this. What I want to do is replace my v. See, the, the v is the part I, I don't really have. Uh, but I solve for V from the first part, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have M2. V is one-third M1 over M2 D omega squared. See, to find a... Um, To find a ratio, a numerical value for M1 over M2, I'm going to need these D squared and omega squares to cancel. So you see what's going to happen is when I multiply this out, this is 1 half M2, this is 1 ninth M1 squared over M2 squared, D squared, omega squared. And you see what interesting happened is these would cancel on both sides, right? So um, I'm going to continue the math up here. Uh, this is 1 18th, so let me write it again. 1, actually, sorry, I'm not going to do it way up there because my face is there. Um, I'm going to do it maybe right over here. I have 1 sixth m1 is equal to, this is 1 18th m2, m1 squared over m2 squared, right? So one of these M1s cancel here, and one of these M2s cancel here. And then I multiply this 18 over here, I get 3 is equal to M1 over M2. Okay. D, a new ball with the same mass M1 as the rod is now placed the distance x from the pivot as shown above. Again, assuming the collision is elastic, for what value of x will the rod stop moving after hitting the ball? Um, so what I want is the, the energy before is one half I omega squared, because I'm assuming, because it's, they said it's elastic. So this energy is conserved. So again, this is one half times one third, um, M1 D squared omega squared. That's one sixth M1 D squared omega squared. And what I want is after the collision, I want this thing to have the same energy. Well, I want I want it to have only kinetic energy, one half m one d squared. Uh, not d squared, uh, v squared. Because I want the only energy to be done afterwards is. Um, this but this doesn't have anything in x in it right so I, again i need to do conservation of um um angular momentum so i want this equality to be true so actually the m1's cancel so i want this equality to be true i also want the momentum to be equal l1 like the angular momentum before is i omega which is still one third m1 d squared omega and I want that to equal to L2, which is the angular momentum afterwards, which kind of the same way we did before, it's I omega, which is M1 times X, this distance uh, squared, times uh, 
v over r omega which is v over i'm just kind of like duplicating the exact same so v over r which would be v over um uh, r would be x the distance so that cancels so here i have the m1s canceling i have one third d squared omega is equal to um x v okay so I think what I can do now is I can solve for x and solve for v here and replace right like so this x um, I'm gonna scroll down to make room to make it a little cleaner. There we go. So this x is equal to one third d squared omega over v. Right, and from this equation, remember this equation was one sixth d squared omega squared equals one half v squared. I can replace x with v. Um, so here I'm going to solve for v so that I multiply to this. So that's one third d squared omega squared equals v squared. So v is equal to the square root of one third d squared omega squared. That's really the square root of one third d omega. So I'm going to put that into here. So x is equal to one third d squared omega over the square root of one third d omega. Omega cancels and d cancels. So x is equal to, uh, I would flip this, so this becomes square root of three divided by three times d. Yeah. Okay. And I believe that's it. So I hope you found that helpful. Um, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching the video guys. Please leave a comment, like, or subscribe below to catch up more of the content and see any links below. I offer free homework help on uh, Twitch and Discord. See you guys in the next video.